Electro frog points, a popular subject of controversy within the model railway community. This is mainly because of their lacking an understanding about these unique junctions. To help give all railway modellers a greater understanding about the pros and cons of electro frog points, I will be making a guide aimed towards understanding the basics of an electro frog turnout and how to wire one up. I shall start by pointing out the general differences in functionality between electro frog points and insul frog points. Right, to keep this video off, I'll be starting with the insul frog point. This is a insul frog point made by Pico. And uh, I'll start off by highlighting the pros and cons of the insul frog point. Now, the benefits to an insul frog point is that they are very, very simple to install. I'll bring along another example here. This is a, a Hornby Express point. Now, they don't say they're insul frog on the box, but they are insul frog because, as you can see by this massive piece of plastic there, they are self insulated. Now, in order to transfer, if you lay out DCC, uh, you can use these, what we what Hornby called digital point clips, to transfer the electricity to the rails. And that will avoid uh, short circuits, and that will obviously prevent you uh, having to drill beneath your baseboard and put power feeds into the rails. But I'll come on to that when I move on to the electro frog point. Now, the obvious downsides to these insul frog points are, now obviously the, the Pico point isn't as bad as the Hornby point, but you get a piece of plastic just there. Now Pico has developed their uh, points to a point where the plastic is to its absolute minimum, but the metal still isn't touching because otherwise that would cause a short circuit. However, these, I like to call them loco murderers, um, they just, they do what I've just said. They kill locos because this, this plastic bit here is in excess of one and a half centimeters long. It is just ridiculous. Now, if you have big locomotives with lots of pickups on the tender and the front and the front pony truck, it isn't much of a problem. But O four O's, O six O's, run into a bit of trouble on these points. But um, if you want to avoid the um, the hassle of drilling and soldering, then just buy an insul frog point. It will save you a lot of work. Right, so basically how it works is this. We've got our positive rail and our negative rail. The positive comes along this rail and goes along the stock rail as normal. And the negative comes along here and travels down this rail here and stops because there's plastic. There's no electricity here yet. However, if I change the point, now the positive is going down here and stops and the negative goes down the stock rail as normal. Now, obviously then you're thinking there's no power to a certain rail and obviously that will prevent uh, the trains going through because obviously there'll be no power. However, like I mentioned before, if you insert these point clips, even into the uh, Pico points, they will still work properly. But then you've got the little plastic bit affecting the detail and you've got these very unrealistic uh, paperclip lookalike things in the point now so it is it's not a big compromise in detail but it's something I want to try and avoid doing so that's the basic concept of an insular frog point they are simple easy to install and they won't cause you trouble with short circuits Right, here we have an example of an electro frog point, uh, also made by Pico. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any spares to show you uh, in my hands, so I'm just going to have to use this example for now. Now, basically, electro frog points are the ultimate in realism. Uh, all of this bit here is metal, and they're made to look as realistic as possible. Now, obviously, like I said before, positive and negative, they're going to clash on these two rails here. Now, if I bring the camera out, Basically, I have installed some plastic fish plates. These are also made by Pico. Now, the trick is, this is where people really do get confused. If we look over to an insul frog point, that bit is plastic, and we have our metal fish plates. Now, with the electro frog point, I like to think it as the plastic bit, just here, has been carried on to this bit here, and that then becomes the insulant. However, we have a loss of power 
to both the stock rails on the right side and the left side. So, you're going to have to do a bit of drilling and soldering. Right, now I'm going to explain to you how an electrofrog point actually works. Now, uh, because this is separated from the rest of the layout, I have uh, put in a feed from the power bus. So here we have our positive and here we have our negative. Now here comes our positive, goes down the stock, goes down right till the very end. No problems there. Now a negative comes along here, goes through the frog because it's all metal, remember, and stops. That prevents the short circuit. Now if I throw the point, our positive comes along here, across the frog, and stops there, therefore preventing a short circuit. And the negative comes down here as normal. And that's how an electrofrog point basically works. Now, you're thinking, to solve these shortages of power here, well, there's no power whatsoever, uh, obviously we need a negative feed, and we need a positive feed here. Now obviously it's wise to colour code uh, your power bus wires so you know what you're wiring in. So basically I drilled a hole here and a hole here, putting feeds into the rails. And do not forget your plastic fish plates. They are vital in preventing short circuits. There you go, you can see them now. Now what people tend to do is they tend to buy an electrofrog point and put metal fish plates in and they start to get immensely confused because they cause short circuits. These are an easy solution, plastic fish plates. They basically take the plastic here and put it here. But a little bit more effort is required to actually install the points in the first place. Obviously you weren't getting massive running benefits but it does look slightly better and I don't want uh, to be filling my points up with point clips because light rolling stock does tend to derail. Not all rolling stock, but some of it does. And that is basically how an electro front point works. Now with an electrofrog point also gives you the opportunity to install something called polarity switching. Now polarity switching does sound like something immensely confusing, but the concept is actually quite simple. Now here we have our electrofrog point all wired in, We've got our feeds here, remember? Negative, positive, and our usual feed here, just there. Now, uh, your train's coming along, and uh, the electricity the negative is being transferred over here to the frog, giving that power. Now obviously it's relying on the face of the point, that just there, touching that rail there in order to transfer the electricity to the point. Now, over time it obviously gets dirty and um, in order for it to work properly you have to clean it and obviously it's quite a bit of a task to clean the face of a point. So basically what polarity does is give you the opportunity to power the frog here, the V bit, uh, without having to clean those faces. And that is done by using a point motor. Now, the point motor, as well as the actual switch mechanism, you also get a positive and a negative. Now, when the point is in this position, like that, just imagine it's under the baseboard, it gives a negative feed to the actual frog. That gives a negative feed. So it's powering that from the point motor, not relying on the faces that touch. Now, if I throw the point and the point motor, now it's going to engage a positive feed. So now the frog is positive and that does not cause a short circuit and trains run properly without relying on the faces touching.